Welcome back to the University of Queensland School of Architecture series of introductory videos to Grasshopper and Rhino. In this video we're going to look at data matching which is important in uh, determining the correct output and functioning of our Grasshopper routines. The way that data is uh, flows through a routine fundamentally affects the, way, the outcomes and geometries that result and sometimes it's important to manage the data in particular ways uh, in order to get um, a particular outcome. Now what we've done here is I've just opened up an instance of uh, Rhino. Uh, it's just a, a simple template uh, with um, a large object in millimeters. Now I'm just going to minimize this, drag it to the side, give myself a bit of space and I'm going to fire up just a, a, a um, a new instance of Grasshopper. I'm going to go File, New Document. Okay, so I'm going to put uh, a series of points um, in the view window here in Rhino Land. So right click for multiple points. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five points on one side of the ledger and one, two, three points on the other side of the ledger. Press enter when done. Now I'm going to link these point parameters um, in Rhino into my um, Grasshopper routine. So I'm going to start off with a point canister or a, a point parameter. So I'm just going to start typing in points. The one in the hexagon is what we want. I'm going to duplicate that. Okay. So, for the first lot of points at the top of the image here, I'm going to right click on my point canister, set multiple points. And the same with the bottom here, point canister, set multiple points. Okay, so we have our points now referenced between our grasshopper routine and our rhino space. Now, we could, um, for example, try and draw a line between uh, these two sets of points. And we can do this by typing in line and just simply plugging in the two lots of inputs. And what we're getting is uh, lines connecting the points, but we're not really too clear as to sort of why it's connecting the the points in that certain sequence and here we've got the three points um, connecting to the one. Now part of the problem is, is that we've set ourselves up with a wicked problem. Um, we're trying to connect a series or uh, draw a line between a series of points but the number of points in, in both of the lists is uneven. So here we've got three points and here we've got five points. And we can double check that by if we just put a panel up through here we can see the flow in here of a set of reference points and if we put a panel here again we should be able to see a set of reference points but we have five of them. What we've got um, is an issue with um, I guess firstly the order of the points and secondly the way that the line draws between these points here. Now what we're going to do is we'll just get rid of this line tool for a second and we're going to um, try and get a bit more information about these points here. What we're going to do is we're going to display the point number so that we've got a bit more of an uh, idea about how what order these points are coming in. So under the display panel up here uh, under vector we can then uh, generate a points list. So what we're going to do through here is set that point up through there, plug that point into here. Now that hasn't done anything because here what we're trying to do is um, display the points as a list and we want um, we need to increase the size of that label. So. We'll give ourselves a number slider 
plug that into there and there and we can make text bigger. Now what you can see is the order of the points is, is going from right to left. So we've got 0, 1, 2 for there, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So they're going in the right sequence but kind of in the opposite order to how I anticipated that they would go. So what we're going to do is adjust that order of points. Now what we can do is we can reorder the sequence of points and we can do that if we go into the point canister here right click we can manage the point collection. Now we can move the number three point to the top and put the second one into the middle go OK and we should see the order of the point go from left to right 0, 1, 2 and we'll do the same with the other one with the point canister manage the point collection and we'll drag that to the top go OK now we've got one zero one two three four running from left to right now we can instruct the line tool to connect these points in a certain way now one way we can do it is to um, connect the zero to the zero one to the one two to the two and then tell grasshopper to stop that um, at that point so what that is called is the shortest list or we're connecting the shortest list. So to get to the uh, list commands or to, to manage the commands there we can go into sets uh, list and we can open up the shortest list and now if we put the line tool in at the end through here plug in uh, the points A and B into the shortest list and then go A and B to our line tool what you can see is happening is that the 0 to 0, 1 to 1, 2 to 2 are connected and then once it runs out of data in one list it then stops the routine so that's how the, the shortest list functions now there's also what's called the longest list and as the name suggests if we plug in the points into that and then we connect it into the line tool what you can see there is that it's preferencing the longest list so what it's doing is it's reading the shortest list going 0 to 0, 1 to 1, 2 to 2 and then it keeps running and saying well actually I've got another point here so I'm going to keep running the longest list I'm going to connect 3 and it's going to connect it to the last value of the um, this row of points 4 to 2 which is why in the last uh, point number 2 on this list we've got three lines connecting to it. Now the last option that we have is what we call a cross-reference. Now in this instance what it's going to do if we plug in those two points values into there, connect it in. In fact what it's going to do is that each point of each list is going to connect to each point of each list. So we've got this um, cross-referencing of, of data and, and every point gets uh, a connector across. Now we're going to come back here and we'll connect up to our shortest list line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate uh, these three lines through here. So I'm going to do a move command and so I need a translation vector so I've got the geometry which is the line and the translation vector which is um, giving me distance so we'll do a slider and we can rename that um, uh, move copy distance okay and we're going to move it straight up so we need to give a, a translation vector 
in the Z direction. So I'll connect those two together and now we can see we might give ourselves a little bit more range through here. Now you can see those lines connecting through there. Now if we wanted to connect these three lines with a loft. Now what we can do is collect all of these in a curve canister or a param um, um, input parameter canister so that what we have is it should be a list of curves. So we've got, sorry, we'll connect firstly the first list of curves which is the the curves that generated these and then we'll double holding the shift key. So we've collected together a list of six curves. Now if we wanted to do a loft between those what will happen is that we will get exactly what it said. We'll get a loft that starts at this line here and works its way around and tries its best to connect through those lines to make a single lofted surface. Now that's perhaps the way we want it to work but in this instance what we're seeking is to create a loft between the actual curves itself. So we're going to to disconnect the curve and what we're aiming to do is connect this line to this line with a surface, this line to this line with a surface, this line to this line with a surface. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to readjust the way that the data is being managed and is the geometry is being applied to to get that effect and we'll do that in the next video.